The British Grand Prix has thrown up some fantastic races over the years, and 2023 was no different. But the winner was never really in doubt. Max Verstappen comes out of the final corner. Max wins the British Grand Prix. It's the first time he's won it as the British Grand Prix, the second time he's won here at Silverstone. Lando Norris finishes in a brilliant second. Lewis Hamilton in third. Two British drivers will be celebrating on the podium. And B2, B2, great job, man. Vamos! Great job. AA, podium in my home race. Podium in our home race. <laughs> yeah, man. Great job. I got McLaren's a rocket ship. Hey, high speed is insane. Well done, guys. Mega job with the pit stop and strategy. Welcome to F1 Nation with me, Tom Clarkson, and Natalie Pinkham. And also joining us for our post race debrief is French journalist Jeremy Sartis from Auto Hebdo. The show comes to you from the heart of the Formula One paddock, where we're joined by Adam Norris, Lando's father, Mark Webber, Christian Horner, Andrew Shovlin, F1 boss Stefano Domenicali, Alex Albon, David Coulthard, Mark Janay and Johnny Herbert. Let's kick things off by hearing from the two Brits on the podium, Lewis Hamilton and Lando Norris. Lando, coming to you. Your best finish at Silverstone of your seven Formula One podiums. How did this one rate? I'd probably say one of the one of the best. Uh, I would say the best, um, most exciting one. I think your first podium in Formula One is always pretty pretty special. That's one you remember forever. But for me, I'm still in that phase where everyone means a lot, and uh, especially my first one here in my home Grand Prix. It's uh, it's very special. Hearing everyone chanting and seeing all the fans, seeing all the team below the the podium. It's um, again. It's something like uh, I saw back in 2007, 2008, when I first started watching Formula One and seeing uh, Lewis and Fernando here. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty special to be to be here now and, and be in that position. So especially on a day like today, with um, how tricky it was at times. So I'm very very proud. Lights out, away we go. Max Verstappen getting off the line, but it's a good start by Norris. A very good start. Lando Norris leads. Piastri's trying to take second, but Max Verstappen around the outside. But it is Lando Norris who leads from Max Verstappen in second place. And how did it feel to lead the British Grand Prix during those early laps? My heart was racing a bit more than normal. And I was watching the crowd a few times and, and just, yeah, just watching them. The team have done a good job. They've improved the car. Uh, you know, the last few weekends we've been extremely good. So um, I'm very happy for them. But yeah, it's, it's, to get the launch it kind of saved me uh, quite a bit. Saved me from some of the chaos behind because you never know what can happen in turn, turn three and turn four. So I managed to push on quite a bit the first few laps, which was exactly what we wanted to do. It just doesn't always go go to plan. But uh, we planned for that and got me out of trouble. And we had a very good pace the first stint. You know, we've managed to break away from everyone quite a bit. Managed to go with Max for a little bit. Just... Um, not as much as a, what I would have loved to do, so, yeah. You were unhappy about having the hard tyre for that final stint. In hindsight, was it the right call? It's, uh, it's a very difficult one to answer. Um, would I have preferred a soft? Would a soft have made me be under less stress for the first three laps after the safety car? I think absolutely. I feel like we put ourselves under a lot more pressure to try and get a hard tyre to work when a safety car restart with only 10 laps to go, pretty much, so... I was telling them to think of the softs quite a bit, insinuating it as much as I could, but they just told me, you're on the hearts. So uh, not really what I wanted, but um, it still worked out. And the final one for me, just talk us through the battle with Lewis at the end there. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was, a very, it was a very good one. It was exciting. I really did want to hold on to P2, so I did everything I could, and a lot of it was trying to get the temperature in the tyres for the restart. The first half of the lap, they were very strong. Even in qualifying, they were up on, up on us all the way until, yeah, Maggots Beckett section. Um, we were just very good always in the last sector. Not the best with, maybe with DRS, that's why Red Bull are extremely quick, but they're very good in the first half. So turn three, turn four, turn six and seven, Lewis could quite easily get on me. But then we, we've always been very good in high speed and, and now it's a very good strength of ours. It keeps the tires in a good condition and I was a lot of laps quite easily flat through to a nine and, and uh, yeah, two down shifts into Magus and Beckett's and I could always give myself that safety margin that I wanted. But it was nice coming out side by side. It was close when I saw him throw to be inside in seven. I'm sure all the fans were, were loving it at the same time, but I chose a slightly lower downforce level uh, yesterday. Um, which was a bit of a risk, but I thought there might be a racing situation where one or two kph might have helped me out. 
and today I did exactly that. So um, I'm thanking uh, my own decision <laughs> to choose a lower down force. Lewis, if we could come to you now. Great job by you. Your 14th British Grand Prix podium. How much did you enjoy being out there again? Uh, well, firstly, congrats to, to, to Max and, and especially uh, Lando, because it was great to see. It was a great battle we had, but it's, it's really amazing to see the McLaren back up in competitive form. You know, I think it's been such a long time. So, uh, And then for me, really didn't expect to be on the podium today. But um, when we go through all the uh, different strategy options, this is the one you hope for, which is the safety car. And, and, and I basically had... Uh, put on the medium tire and hope and plan to just stay out on them till the very end until a safety car potentially would come and fortunately it did so um our long run pace is really good and and really grateful for the team to for continuing to push we do have a lot of work to do on our car to put ourselves in proper competitive form to fight uh, the, Re the red bulls and, and now mccarran's you were eighth at the end of lap one what were you thinking at that moment I can't tell you the actual words I was thinking, but it was a, one of the worst opening laps that I've had for a while. So I think I'll ultimately just trying to gather my thoughts and calm down and not be erratic. But it, I had a relatively decent start, and then into turn three, just seemed to lock the rears for some reason. I think we had a tailwind into there, and for me, I just kept snapping and went wide. And then the same into turn six and turn seven, and it was very tricky on the first lap. But then after that, just tried to find my feet and um, the Ferraris were pretty quick so it wasn't easy to catch them and overtake but put us in a good position but um, the most impressive part was at the end following him it was amazing to watch how good his car was in the high speed and um, I know that we've got some work to do to catch up. Tell us more about that battle because at various points we saw you side by side going into cops. Yeah um, I've, I threw it up the inside into turn seven in the hope that I can finally that was the one, that, this is the moment I'm gonna make it happen and I pressed the overtake button. Did you press the overtake button? So we're both going down the road with the overtake but he had less drag so I guess he said he had a smaller wing and he just started pulling so I had to back out. But uh, I, I was relatively quick in the first half of the lap and I think if you look at our qualifying laps we were very, very close to max all the way till I think it's till turn 13 and then that's where they pulled all their time. So we've got some work to do to, to improve our high-speed performance. Lewis, final one from me. Do you think McLaren had a faster car than you this weekend? Yeah. <laughs> yes, 100%. <laughs> um, and last week. But this is the first time in a, in a long time, and um, they deserve to have the performance they have, you know, as I said. So we've got to do a better job. They've now done a better job than us. And um, what I would say is that this is one of the most exciting times, I think, we've seen in the sport where we finally started to see the regs pull people closer. The other day, you know, you've seen the, the Williams was up there with um, Albon. You've seen the McLarens now, the Astons. So we have a lot of teams getting very, very close, um, small gaps within qualifying, which is exactly what we need. So um, looking forward to seeing the rest of the year evolve. Another incredible performance by Max Verstappen, his sixth win in a row. The man doesn't know how to stop winning, but Natalie, there's been so many stories this weekend at Silverstone. What is the biggest one for you? Oh, that's so, oh, listen, we're standing here in McLaren, and for me, that is the biggest story. The, you know, the improvements that they've made. But just a quick word on Max. When I spoke to him in the pen, I said, you know, what does anyone got to do to get you out of this groove? You are just sixth consecutive win. It's been absolutely phenomenal. He said, well, you know, actually today wasn't that great because this happened and this happened and you know all these little mini battles that he was having obviously not a great start from him and I said yeah but isn't that the point that even on your bad day you win a race and that's the kind of form that he's in. For me the the, the, the main story of, of the weekend is obviously uh, obviously McLaren and and, and I would even say uh, Oscar Piastri because, uh, of course, as a rookie, um, he, we, we just didn't expect uh, him to be uh, as close as, uh, as Londo uh, uh, like this uh, as early. So, uh, yeah, I would probably say uh, McLaren, of course, and, and Oscar. Jeremy, I'm with you on that. I was really impressed by Oscar Piastri. Yes, Lando Norris put in that brilliant lap to start on the front row of the grid here. But, but Piastri, in his first Grand Prix at Silverstone, his... You know, this is his first season, was really competitive all weekend, wasn't he? He even had the old front wing on his car. 
he looked, I thought, very steady in the race. And it, if it hadn't been for that last safety car, yeah, he would have been on the podium absolutely. instead of Lewis Hamilton. And he described it as bittersweet as a result because this is obviously his best performance in Formula One, an astonishing turnaround from the team. And yet he was still irked by the fact that he wasn't on the podium, his first podium, obviously, in the sport. So, yeah, I mean, again, I put this to the Mercedes drivers that when they said just how surprised they were with the McLaren pace, I said, yeah, but also, strangely, you could feel heartened by their performance because it goes to show how quickly you can turn things around if you get the right upgrades. It seems to me this season is so unpredictable. You know, yes. Well, it is behind Max. Behind, <laughs> behind <laughs> yeah. Max. There is one ever present out the front. But, you know, will McLaren, with their pace through the fast corners, be as quick next time out in Hungary? There are no guarantees. But let's just take it for this one weekend. Jeremy, were you surprised by their pace here? Yeah, of course. Of course, uh, uh, I've been surprised because even, even Londo in the press conference said, we, we always know that in Austria we are so good and in Silverstone there's uh, fast corners, but there's uh, uh, also combinations of others. So he was not uh, as confident uh, as in Austria. So of course it's a, it's a bit uh, of a surprise and, and P2 and P3 it's it's like crazy honestly so uh, um, yeah a, a bit a bit surprised but not really on the fact that Oscar was uh, up there because uh, in his previous years Oscar has always uh, been been very very great here in, in Silverstone he, he won the feature race uh, uh, in Formula 2 he, he put it on pole and, and win also in uh, in Formula Renault uh, back in the days in F3 uh, it, it was great too so uh, I, I'm not really surprised by this but uh, but uh, honestly very very great performance from he, he's uh, incredibly similar to Mark Webber by the race I think he looks everything he does like Mark Webber was always brilliant here at Silverstone he loved the fast True. corners Oscar is the same although I, I it's a whole nature nurture isn't it it's like <laughs> it's like he's not his son but he's nurtured him and he's obviously by some process of osmosis absorbed all of his <laughs> positive energy um, and I also think that Oscar's very calm and I always feel Mark is a very calm person to be around so he yeah he's mirroring his behavior in that way as well it's been an extraordinary turnaround for McLaren as well, hasn't it? In the way that, you know, let's go back to Bahrain and Saudi for a second. Okay, they, they'd warned us before going there that they were going to struggle. But, you know, at those opening two races of the season, I think there were people thinking this was going to be McLaren's worst season in a long time. Yeah, absolutely. Disastrous. I mean, look, I don't think we should get carried away. And actually, both drivers were at pains to say that in the pen. Because remember Monza? with the one two you know they got first and second at the Italian Grand Prix and then it kind of well obviously Russia was close to being a win for Lando but then kind of nothing and I that was kind of inexplicable at the time as well I think you're spot on when you say that there is so little between the chasing pack and every racetrack seems to throw up a different packing order Max said to me I'm cool with that you know they're taking points off each other they're scuffling and shuffling around behind me and I can just focus on the job in front. Here's an addendum, an interesting addendum, which is that Lando actually had a new race engineer this weekend because, I mean, Will Joseph, his regular guy, was here, but he's going on paternity leave just after the summer break. And Jose, who has been Lando's performance engineer for the last couple of years, uh, was promoted to race engineer. And I asked Will earlier in the weekend, how influential are you being, you know, in terms of telling them what to do? He said, no, I'm, I'm letting them get on with it because they are going to have to get on with it on their own. So as there was that decision about hard or soft tire for that last stint, I was thinking, oh no, Jose, poor Jose, it's the first time he's had to make that call and now Lando's criticizing him it on the radio. It was such a big call, yeah. wasn't it? Because it could have gone horribly wrong. They, they obviously did get it working for them, but Lando was like, it was so stressful for me you know dropping down the order or whatever and listen he made his feelings very clear on team radio didn't he but look it worked out well in the end <laughs> you know. and he just had to survive those first couple of laps keep lewis hamilton at bay and then then i think the hard tire was going to come into its own because of course the mclaren heats up its tires so efficiently through these fast corners so the party is really starting here at McLaren and we're joined now by Adam Norris, Lando's dad. Tell us, how were you feeling in those closing laps when Lando had Lewis all over his gearbox? Scared but excited. 
He lost the European Championships in karting with a lap to go. So no one celebrated. And as soon as he got over the line, the second he was over the line, we celebrated. We cheered. Oh. Amazing. Adam, it is a huge moment for him, right? He actually said coming into the weekend, I would do anything to finish on the podium at Silverstone. I mean, special for him, but special for you as a family as well. I think so, yeah. It's been nearly 15 years of hard work, and that's the best result when you go through, and it's exciting. Still one more step to go. Look, and what do you make of the growth of Lando this year? I feel that in terms of his personality, quite apart from what he's doing in the car, and Pinks, I don't know if you agree with me, but I feel what he's doing, just the brand Lando Norris is just going, it's exploded this year, I feel. Do you know what? I went out on the track parade with him earlier, and it was so funny because the crowd were going nuts, absolutely nuts. And I was like, this is a bit surreal, isn't it? He was like, oh no, I'm just a normal lad. This is so weird, but I feel like a rock star. But he just seemed to absorb that energy and harness it in such a positive way today. Yeah, and he is just, I guess, my little boy. So yeah. that's the, the odd thing. We've grown up with him. And yes, you see it. And sometimes it's surreal and the number of people cheering and hearing the crowds. Yesterday I watched it on TV, the qualifying. And so that bit's surreal, but it's, he's still just a normal guy inside. Adam, you just said it's 15 years of hard work. At what point in his career did Formula One become a, a realistic target for you guys? When did you think it could happen? It's a very different answer, different question, but I actually thought genuinely, I was 50-50 whether he'd ever get into Formula One the day he signed his contract, which was back in Monza. And it's that difficult to get in and things can go the wrong way. So I really didn't know until, he, he showed signs of promise when he was really young. He was always fast, he was ridiculously fast. So he'll be able to take it to max. I think he's the guy to beat Max. I genuinely do. It's, it's so funny actually seeing them in the cool down room together because they're like best mates. They, it's so funny seeing them sort of debrief the race together. And Max is like, oh, it's really nice having Lando up here with me. I don't want them to be too pally. I want them to be feisty and competitive. Well, well now, Adam, my fight. question, Max actually said he thought Lando was a bit kind to him at the you know early in the race when Max got past him. What was your take on that? I think Lando knew he was going to keep first so therefore wanted to make sure he finished the race properly rather yeah. than wasting time destroying his tires no way you're, so no way you're back Liz. yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. so getting second would be great later in the year we'll go for first <laughs> that's my belief yeah. and it's going to be at the right time right place to do it but where, where do you think mclaren will be quick going forward i have no idea <laughs> I really don't. Hopefully everywhere. <laughs> I hope everywhere. Yeah, that would be great. Right, I think but we I really let don't you know. get back to yeah, partying yeah, yeah, no, with no, your family. No, Thank you so Thank much. You. Huge moment for you, well done. Thank you for joining Amazing. us. Amazing. Well done. Great Good stuff. to see you. So that was the Lando Norris gang we've just been speaking to. We've headed over to the other side I of the... podcast. <laughs> the other side of... Uh, the McLaren, what do we call this place? The Brand Centre. And it's Team Weber over here. Mark, huge day for Oscar Piastri. Little bit of disappointment that he wasn't of on the course. podium. As he yeah. quaffs, you, do, you asked him at the wrong moment, though. He was just have a, have a sip of your drink. <laughs> Hang on, enjoy that. First drink of the day. Uh, of course, mixed emotions, yeah. I mean, he didn't put a foot wrong. As a driver, if you make an error and you lose places, obviously you can live with that, but he didn't do anything wrong. Uh, he actually nailed the first stint. Obviously, they were in flying in formation in that first in to protect against the Ferraris, which was going down very, very, very well. Obviously, had no answers for Max. But ultimately, it was a 1-2, really, to, to convert it at that point. And obviously, when um, the safety car came out, then obviously Lewis got the free stop, which let him uh, leapfrog Oscar and obviously split the two McLarens. So that was uh, tricky. But I think overall, big picture, McLaren, very special day. And Oscar drove um, incredibly well all weekend, actually. I think, um, you know, the whole weekend for him from free practice has been extremely high level and um yeah it's been a good day and obviously land a home race it's a, it's a big effort for them what will this do for oscar's confidence going forward i think it's just very good you know for a driver to understand that um you know when you have experience that that far up the front obviously it's just great for for the hard drive to put in the computer for future events uh to understand that yeah, obviously following Max for whatever how many laps he did, and obviously then obviously Max passed uh, Lando, and, and then obviously he was in the top three for, for for most of the Grand Prix. So I think that he realises that obviously you know sometimes uh, what I found in my career obviously it's you're not doing a, a huge amount different, but obviously what has changed obviously the number on the pit board changes, and it's like I've just got to you know you got to you know pull the emotions out of it, which obviously Oscar's extraordinarily um, you know that's one of his biggest strengths obviously. So ultimately. 
Again, huge learning curve. He's so, so early in his career. Obviously, he's only done a, you know, hasn't even done a dozen races yet. Um, this is the slowest he'll be. So, uh, yeah, it's going well. And Mark, you were always lightning quick around Silverstone. What tips did you give him? If, if there was one bit of advice you could have given him coming into the weekend about Silverstone, uh, what was it? That's trade secrets, mate. <laughs> People pay big money for those. <laughs> so he's got it. All right, Mark, fantastic. Thanks, guys. Great job. Thank you. We've partnered with AG1 for this episode of F1 Nation. AG1 is the daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. And if you're a long-time listener of the show, you'll know that I'm already deep into my journey with AG1. What started as a way to build consistent, no-fuss, healthy habits now fits so effortlessly into my routine that it's pretty much become second nature to pop a scoop of AG1 powder in water each morning and start my day right. With each serving, I'm getting 75 high-quality ingredients that give me the key daily nutrients my body needs for me to feel at my best. And you know what? I've seen a huge improvement in my energy levels since I first started drinking it. In fact, I think I have AG1 to thank for helping me get through all the time zone changes that we have on the Formula One calendar. So forget what you know about traditional supplements because AG1 is raising the standard for quality in the supplement category. AG1 is a science-driven formulation of vitamins, probiotics, and whole food source nutrients that all work together to support your immune system and improve your gut health in one drinkable habit. Plus, it tastes great too. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com forward slash F1 Nation. That's drinkag1.com slash F1 Nation. Check it out. Well done, mate. That's our first win here since 2012, and it matches a record of McLaren of 11 wins in a row. So, uh, yeah, mega day for the team. Well done. Great job, guys. 11 in a row. That's uh, really crazy. Let's hear from the race winner now. Here's Max Verstappen. Can you talk us through the opening moments of the Grand Prix? What happened as you were trying to get away from the light? Yeah, just a lot of wheel spin. So as soon as that happens, of course, you lose so much, uh, so much drive, you know, all the way, all the way to turn one. And then, yeah, Lando was in front. I just tried to stay out of trouble uh, through turns three, four. Then I had a little uh, battle with uh, with Oscar into uh, into Cops. Had to stay on the outside, um, but yeah, it all worked out. You are ever present at the front at the moment, but what do you make of the changing order behind you at the moment? It's very confusing to be honest, <laughs> because every single race weekend it's it's someone else. I think it's just because it's so close behind that yeah, if you get your car in a little bit of a better window, it works uh, on one particular track. So for me, yeah, it's I don't know what's going to happen in in Hungary to be honest. Uh, who's going to be quickest or second quickest. But yeah, the stable factor so far is that every single weekend, it seems like, you know, we are on top, which of course is the, the most important from our side. But again, Hungary, completely different track. We will put some upgrades on the car there and hopefully they will work well. Christian Horner, 11 in a row, yeah. six in a row for Max. You're covered in, I think that looks yeah, like Red Bull. You've obviously just done the sp <laughs> You're drenched in Red Bull. I can feel but it running down the back of my trousers, <laughs> but there we go. Look, how are you feeling after that one? Um, look, I mean, it's just a remarkable, remarkable achievement. 11 in a row is something, you know, something incredible. One Grand Prix is hard enough. Running 11 in succession is insane. And to think that, you know, McLaren last did this in 1988 uh, is something the whole team can be incredibly, incredibly proud of. And, uh, you know, particularly here at Silverstone to get that, that 11th victory. We haven't won here since Mark Webber in 2012. So a huge, huge win for us today and one that we're really proud of. Max just nails it. I, I, okay, you won a lot with Sebastian Vettel. Yeah. Did he give you the confidence in the cockpit that you're getting from Max Verstappen? It's very now? similar. I mean, uh, different eras and difficult to compare. But you know, Max has just got this. Uh, even when he loses a start, you just know, uh, you know, he's going to be right there. And and McLaren, hats off to them. They were very competitive at. Uh, you know, parts of the race today, and it was, uh, you know, they gave us a real motor race today. All right, very well done. Thank you. Thank Go you. and get that shirt off. I don't uh, want you yeah. to get a chill or something. Uh, yes. <laughs> thanks a lot. All right. Thanks, Christy. David Coulthard's with us now. Let's talk about Max Verstappen now. The job that guy is doing is almost insane. He is bulletproof. 
he's flawless at the moment. Very few mistakes. Okay, you could argue he didn't get off the line as well as maybe he should, but that may well just be a consequence of the way the car set up to be so strong at high high speed aerodynamically that they're just mechanically very compromised. But um, yeah, I think we're witnessing the sort of moments that we saw you know, during Senna's time or Schumacher's time or Lewis's dominance. Vettel's dominance, just pick your favourite driver. Um, the, anyone who wins more than one world championship, in my mind, is already pretty special. And um, he's, he's making the most of the opportunity. You've just mentioned some very special names there. Is Max Verstappen in that company now? Yeah, uh, no question in my mind. If you look at the way he drives, look at the, the, the speed, the commitment, the ease of which he handles changing conditions, making very few mistakes in what we've had so far this year, a few changing uh, weather conditions through, through qualifying. So, of course, he's not flawless because he's only human, but um, anyone that doesn't recognize his brilliance, it's only because they're not a particular fan of how he maybe talks out of the car or, or, or the fact that they, they support another team. But um, to deny him or to deny Red Bull acknowledgement for their consistency over you know a period it's almost 20 years now uh, of growth within that business and um, I think they, it's, uh, it's a mistake. And what is the attitude here in the team now? Do you, do you think we're going to see them take their foot off the gas in terms of developing this RB19? Are they now going to be focusing on next year's car? So trying to be positive about it, are we going to see the battle at the front get even closer as the year progresses? I think it has been pretty close. In the end, Max didn't walk away. Has it away really, with, though, DC? Yeah, it has. God, I, even I managed to win Grand Prix with a bigger gap than what we've seen in some of these races. So it's like a one-make formula, you know, Formula 2, Formula 3. There's, there's always somebody that's doing a little better job, and you only need to be a tenth or a ten, two tenths quicker, and that's enough to, to be clocking up the wins. Red Bull, at various points, have a bit more than that. But, um, no, I'd look at the last two Grand Prix. Austria, less than a tenth in qualifying here on a much longer track, a couple of tenths in qualifying. That's, that's a pretty tight margin. Okay, well look, DC, it's been great to get your thoughts. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jeremy, always brilliant to get David Coulthard's thoughts, but I would love to get your thoughts on Max Verstappen because prior to coming into Formula One, you've been one of those journalists who's worked your way up through the ranks. You were you know, reporting on all these guys when they were in the junior formulas. What's your take on Max? Of course, uh, being able to uh, come to Formula One uh, from uh, uh, Formula Three directly is something like really impressive. But what is the the most impressive? Impressive, I think, with Max is uh, when you ask uh, his engineers and so on. It's really the, the car control he, he is able to have, uh, the maturity he has. Uh, the engineers at Red Bull say we are not uh, developing the car for Max Verstappen. We are doing it uh, uh, to be the quickest possible, and Max is. Uh, better than the others to drive very unstable car and so on. This is where he's impressive for me. Pinks, do you think Max is going to lose a race? I mean, law of averages, he has to, right? Oh, look, I just can't see it. I mean, you know, we touched on it earlier. Even on his bad days, he's still delivering. I mean, he's just another level. I suppose there are external factors that can come into play. But honestly, I wouldn't bet against it. It's just... It's a privilege to watch. I mean, we saw some freakish things, didn't we, when he went into the pit wall yesterday in quali. These things do happen. And I know that they, Red Bull have been bulletproof to this point in terms of reliability. But, you know, you are starting to see some DNFs creep in. Kevin Magnussen, shocking weekend. So, look, it's not impossible. Now, Jeremy, Sergio Perez. He had a horrible qualifying session. He lined up 15th. 15th! In a yeah. Red Bull. Yeah. On the grid. He fought his way through to sixth place, but it's difficult times for him, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Of course, it's a it's, uh, difficult time because it, it, it was not uh, like just one time. It's the, the fifth time uh, in a row that he's not in Q3 with a Red Bull car. This is... This is, of course, uh, very disappointing. Uh, of course, he will have to, to show uh, uh, better performance in the, in the, the next races because, uh, unfortunately, we know how it works in Red Bull and uh, it, it can be very, very tough so sometimes. What do you do about Sergio Perez if you are Red Bull? Is it just a question of confidence? Do you feel they might have developed the car in the wrong direction for him? 
Of course, it's it's hard to say because uh, I, I'm not sure Red Bull is uh, developing the car in a way or another. They just try to make the, the car the fastest possible and sometimes it suits uh, more to uh, one driver than the, the other one. What to do for um, Checo? I think uh, just keep focus on, on himself. Uh, I think the, the Red Bull uh, bosses are always saying that he's maybe focusing too much on, on, on Max, on the, the rankings and so on. And, and, and probably when you are uh, when you are having a, a bad times like this, you, you, you should probably uh, stay focused on yourself, trying to find a performance and, and so on. And, and yeah, I think you just have to, to gain this confidence back. Look, before we talk about everyone else in the top 10. Let's just celebrate Silverstone for a second. With the big boss, we're joined now by Stefano Domenicali. 480,000 people over the weekend, 160,000 today on race day. Stefano, this place has nailed it. I would say very proud, very proud and thankful for the, all the people came here to share this passion uh, for motorsport, for Formula One. And I think that uh, it's just amazing to see what uh, F1 is able to do and uh, what has been the step up if you compare to last year. So congrats to Silverstone for the job because when you have so many people, there are a lot of logistics to handle and to manage. But uh, I think that the event was really great. You know, track time, a lot of action and then in the evening concert, uh, fan zone full. So really, really very impressed. But that's another statement on where Formula 1 is today. Did you go to the concert? Yes, last night, uh, because I, I had sleep in the motorhome. So because there was the Black Eyed Peas uh, playing, yeah. you know, he couldn't sleep. So I said, you know, I just go there and they go back to sleep. Can't beat them, join them, right? Exactly. I was there on the stage behind, of course, but it was great fun to see. By the way, you know what has happened last night? There were all the fans cheering for you. No, there was a song, oh, you kids who know that. No. Everyone sing. It was just amazing. I got a, you know, I got a video I can share with you. So that's great. Well, Stephanie, you're looking at the president of the Yuki Sonoda fan club in, in no, Natalie. I, yeah. You see, yeah. Natalie, you knew. I, she I'll she send it to you. To I'll send it to you later yeah. because it was just incredible. I spoke to Lewis afterwards and I was asking him about the fans. And he said, you know, every year we seem to have the same conversation about how incredible the fans are. I've never known anything like it. And every year it seems to get bigger and better. Is there a ceiling to this? I mean, what is the absolute capacity? capacity of Silverstone and indeed all the racetracks around the world. How far can we go in terms of this explosion in popularity? Of course, we need to be humble and think about the growth that we are having together. I think there is still margin to grow, but we need to not we need to not to forget that the quality of what we are offering has to have a, a limit on that. So I think we are getting there, but uh, the quality event is not only to increase the number of people, could be to increase the differentiation of the offer that we can give to the fans, uh, because that's very important. And, and uh, once again, being creative. If you think what we did today for the first time in the history of sport, to have the first action scene on the track for the movie on Formula 1, that was done here today. That's gave up you know, some other food for thoughts very on what cool. we can do for a better and bigger Formula 1. Thank you, Stefano. Thank, so Thank, Thank you so much. Great to see you. Thank you so All right. much. Can we just reference a stat that is, this is the first time we've had a, two Brits on the podium since 1999 at the British Grand Prix. That How blows my history? mind. Who, who were those two Brits? <laughs> well, it must have been... Jeremy, are you gonna, can you embarrass us and tell us who the two Brits were on the podium? No, in absolutely not. <laughs> David Coulthard, Eddie Irvine, DC it was. and Eddie. Yeah. Oh. But two, look, back to your right, two yes, Brits. Yes, 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 yes. So, now obviously, Lewis was somewhat fortuitous with that safety car, missed his chance to pit under the virtual safety car and then got his chance under the safety car. And that obviously put pay to Oscar getting his maiden podium in Formula One. But I have to say, it was great to have Lewis up there. It was great to get the roar of the crowd. How much of a step forward it is in terms of Mercedes development and their progress and their pace, I just don't know. And I don't think they do either. Well, they've got the new front wing here. and. I think there is a general sense of disappointment within Mercedes. And this third place for Lewis Hamilton is a great surprise. You know, they lack straight line speed, certainly compared to the Red Bull and the McLaren. Maybe the Hungaro ring will suit them better. You know, let's not beat about the bush. The only reason Lewis Hamilton was on the podium was because of that safety yeah. car. But I did love that battle. Hamilton's picked up the toe once more, and we know that Cobb's corner, you can get round, and he's going to try around the outside, but Norris defending absolutely brilliantly, keeps 
Lewis Hamilton at bay. Hey. And here we go around Luffield and into Woodcote. They're almost wheel to wheel. On the gas, Lando Norris edges just ahead of Lewis Hamilton. Hamilton will try and hold this one for as long as he can. They almost touch before they get into cops. Hamilton has to yield. That battle in the closing laps, Jeremy, between Lewis Hamilton and Lando Norris, side by side into cops. Yeah, it was just uh, it was just uh, brilliant. We of course knew that it was not uh, uh, supposed to uh, to last uh, more than than two laps, uh, obviously. But uh, the show was uh, incredible, and and of course for the crowd, uh, seeing the two Brits, yeah, having that that battle, it was, I guess was just uh, was just incredible, and we we could see uh, uh, how how good are they uh, uh, both of them. And and George Russell just slightly missed out didn't he I felt it was uh, he had a great qualifying performance uh, you know sixth to qualify ahead of Lewis Hamilton but in the race I felt George never quite got the rub of the green I mean he came home in fifth place well he was just blown away by the pace of the McLarens he really was he actually came um, on the I'm radio gonna doorstep, wasn't he? previous winner of the British Grand Prix an absolute legend total like pin-up pin up. Pin up who the are we stud, talking about that is Johnny Herbert <laughs> Hello, everyone. Johnny, we were just talking about having two Brits on the podium here at Silverstone. You know what it's, it's good, like. good, wouldn't it? 1995. Yeah. We were all screaming. Johnny Herbert's won the British Grand Prix. Well, I think the wonderful thing about sort of seeing that happen this time around, I did, even when it was Mansellmania, of course, I was in the car as well. But to hear the crowd, obviously, on the start when Lando got into the lead, it's brilliant and we've always been as you know very blessed that the support that the British fans do every single year that they come here and they still have a passion for it so going back to 95 it was special for me seeing all those Union Jacks people standing up in the grandstands or on the banks and waving but waving at you so that just makes it more special lovely memories for me and Johnny with your racing driver head on how good was Lando Norris on the hard tyre keeping you know a very aggressive Lewis Hamilton on the soft tyre behind him well, I think it all started really at the start. It just showed that he was really, really concentrating on the job that he needed to do. But then you're right, when he had that pressure on his shoulders, he placed the car, even with Max actually, when Max was trying to overtake him early on, he was placing the car beautifully. A good racer's head on it, and he's only going to learn from that experience he's had today, and he's only going to get better, which is brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Look, Johnny, thank you very much. Great to catch Pleasure. up with you again. Really good to see you. Now, no one's rushing off for aeroplanes, so it seems more people are around. And Andrew Shovlin, I like to think friend of the show uh, from Mercedes is with us now. How much of a pleasant surprise was that P3? Um, I mean, obviously the safety car made it uh, possible and we wouldn't have been looking at a podium without that. It was a surprise how fast McLaren were, but I think, you know, they're here to stay at the front of the grid now. Um, but no, is it, I mean, it's just nice to have one of our drivers up there um, nice to recover from a difficult Friday and nice to get the points against Ferrari and Aston. But, you know, we look at where McLaren are and we realise we've got some work to do. Well, Shav, you introduced a new front wing here this weekend. And it's no secret, really, that oh, as we're just Lewis is coming past us now. But Lewis seemed pretty downbeat after qualifying yesterday. Maybe he'd been expecting a bit more. Were you guys, the engineers, expecting more from the new package? Um, I mean, it's, it's difficult to say because, you know, everyone's developing so, so rapidly. You look at where Aston Martin were and, you know, early on in the year, um, they were the team behind Red Bull and they, they were three tenths ahead of us at some point. So it's, re it's really hard to judge. I think we're happy that the development that we've done is in the right direction. Uh, is it enough? No, we need more. All right. Well, let's hope we get more in Hungary. Shav, thank you so much. Thank you very much. There's a man in red just walking past us. Mark Janay, difficult day at the office for Ferrari. What's the mood in the camp after that? Yeah, that we didn't really maximize our potential, despite the safety car. Of course, the safety car was very negative for us. Uh, probably our position today, we should have been sixth and seventh, and we finished ninth and tenth because of the safety car. But still, we, I think we, we could have done a better job. But it's so close now, you know, from there's four teams now who are within a few tens, and when you don't do everything perfect. You go from second, we were in Austria, to ninth and tenth here, you know, which is it's a nice thing, but that shows now that you have to do such a good job to be the next after uh, Red Bull. It has been a, a bit of a surprise to see a Ferrari pitted uh, Charles so early uh, to go on the, on the hunt. Could you just 
explain that decision? Yeah, we thought that Russell was gonna would have done an undercut otherwise. Uh, after Russell's pit stop, anyway, Charles was ahead, of course, with a hard compound, so he was uh, he was vulnerable. But uh, yeah, we we were just defending ourselves from Russell. I, I don't think would have would have changed. Probably in, in hindsight, yes, you you could have waited because in that track the undercut was not so so powerful. But at that at that point, really today we were not as quick as Mercedes, not as quick as McLaren, so we were really defending ourselves. Mark, there was so much optimism coming out of Ferrari after the Austrian Grand Prix last weekend. Are you surprised at how things turned out here, just in terms of the pace of the car, or were you expecting Silverstone to be a bit more difficult? I think our pace was very, quite similar to, to the other cars, maybe within one or two tenths. That's for, for sure not the track that is good for us, but we still were doing okay. We qualified fourth and fifth, so all in all, I think we've made big progress from Barcelona. I'm, I'm really confident about that. And now we just have to see for Budapest, which is going to be a much favorable track for us. But really, as I say, we didn't do a good enough job today. But despite that, we were, we were, the, we were the fourth team today. And it's going to go from one, sometimes it's going to be like that, sometimes it's going to be, going to be the second team. And it's going to be a very close battle within, within all these teams. Behind Red Bull, it is extraordinarily close, isn't it? That's why it's very close, and that's why when you don't do well, you end up ninth and tenth. You know, which is it's a, it's a great it's a shame that Max is dominating like that. Otherwise, it would be a great championship. Yeah. All right, Mark. Thank you so much for your time. Travel safe. See, I would actually argue it is a great championship. It's just the chasing pack behind Max that is the great championship. You come into a weekend not knowing what's going to happen, and that's. I mean, yes, of course, that would be great to include the first position in that battle but actually let's just take it for what it is it's a great period of dominance for Max which we will you know notch up in history as being an incredible moment in the sport but behind him you just can't call it the Italians love a sensational headline Jeremy their drivers were beaten by Alex Albon in a Williams here at Silverstone uh, can you even begin to imagine what Gazzetta della Sport is going to be saying tomorrow? I prefer not to imagine, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, of course, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's sad for them, but uh, as Natalie said, it's always like this, you know. Uh, it can be complicated sometimes. Of course, they, are, they, are, they have not been uh, uh, held by the, the safety car. So, yeah, pro probably uh, they will bounce back in, uh, in Hungary, uh, I'm pretty sure. I think that's a really good point. They weren't helped by the safety car and... As Mark Janay told us, I think the layout of the Hungara ring is going to suit them better. But still, it's hard times at Ferrari and there's so much pressure. You can never get away from the pressure. Now, I don't think there are many people on the grid with more confidence at the moment than Alex Albon. Yeah. The man is doing extraordinary things in that Williams. He qualified eighth. He finishes, he finishes the Grand Prix in eighth ahead of both Ferraris. I mean, what a brilliant home Grand Prix for him. Yeah, Alex is doing like like really, really good job those, uh, those last uh, weeks. Uh, of course, it's uh, due to him, but I think it's also due to the, the Williams package that is better and better. We can see that even uh, Logan Sargent is doing uh, is doing very good job. Uh, he is P11 uh, uh, here in uh, in Great Britain, but of course Alex is uh, able with the experience uh, and uh, and his, his his talent and his speed to uh, yes to maximize the package he has and. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, this is really brilliant, and I think he, he could have a, a, a very good future uh, in the in, in the next years. Oh oh <laughs> oh my God! The segues are brilliant. We were literally talking about you. We were literally talking at the Williams. It's like you're at the we're at the hospi hospitality right now, and you are. It's like you're a you're like a gremlin, <laughs> like a like a. I'm, like I'm not a, often called a gremlin. Like in the wardrobe, just like waiting. Um, I was actually told that you were at the fan zone, so I wasn't expecting to see. And I just came back. And How mental was only, that? Only to be greeted by you. I have uh, the media since I've literally got out of the car has been relentless, um, which is a good thing. It means you're doing something right. You're doing something right. It's just a lot. So here I am with you now. Know, you are a friend of the show. We like to think, but hey, Alex, we were Jeremy and I were just celebrating a your performance this weekend, but also. The performance of the car were you surprised to be as quick as you were here at Silverstone yes yes um, to the point where we 
you need to understand why we were quick. Sometimes it's, it's important to understand why you're slow, but it, it's also to understand why on the other side, um, when it's going well, what's, what's making the car click um, compared to everyone else. So it, it's not like it felt amazing. You know, I think everyone struggled with the wind to this weekend. The circuit itself is difficult. The compound or the tires were difficult. Yeah, I guess there's a little bit of a question mark on it. I think, well, we know we're going to review this after you know next week and, and, and use this time in between Hungary and, and now to to figure out what went right. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I have to say it was an amazing job. And 800th GP, home race, a lot of family here from, from, from the whole team and, and also partners. So to be able to deliver um, this result, it, it's, it's a big deal. And, and now we're fighting, you know, P7, I think, in the constructors now. A joint, albeit, but still we're P7. Um, bring it on. Bring it on, celebrate it. You're doing a brilliant job. Well, well done. What a great job by him and Williams. And as you say, Logan. So the top 10 look like this. Max Verstappen took his sixth win in a row and his second here at Silverstone, followed by Lando Norris, who got his best finish at home. And then Lewis Hamilton took his 14th podium here at Silverstone to come home in third. Oscar Piastri was fourth, his best finish in Formula One. George Russell, fifth, his first points here at Silverstone. Then Sergio Perez was sixth, Fernando Alonso, seventh, Alex Albon, eighth, and then the Ferraris of Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz rounding out the top 10. In the Drivers' Championship, Max Verstappen continues to lead the way on 255 points, 99 points clear of his Red Bull teammate Sergio Perez in second place. Fernando Alonso comes third, 16 points ahead of Lewis Hamilton in fourth. Then it's very close between Carlos Sainz in fifth and George Russell in sixth, just the one point separating them. Then in seventh comes Charles Leclerc, Lance Stroll is eighth, Lando Norris is ninth, and Esteban Ocon is tenth. In the Constructors' Championship, Red Bull now have double the points of their closest finishers. They're on 411 and they're 208 points ahead of Mercedes in second on 203. Then it's very close. Aston Martin just 22 points behind Mercedes in third. Ferrari a fourth. Then come McLaren, who's 30 points this weekend. Bump them up to fifth place ahead of Alpine in sixth. Williams are now seventh on 11 points, equal with Haas in eighth. And then it's Alfa Romeo in ninth and Alfa Tauri in tenth. What a weekend. What, yeah. it's, it's all a bit of a blur right now, as it always is British Grand Prix. But honestly, there is such incredible energy at Silverstone. I don't know about you, but does it, it feels somewhat different this year. Every time, as Lewis says, it just goes up a notch. And it's, it's a special time for Formula One. Yeah, Silverstone is, is one of the, the biggest events and, and in terms of show. Even as a French, I, I have to say it, honestly. And of course, this year, they were the, the, the battle with uh, Lando and, uh, and Lewis and the fact that uh, there's uh, many cars that are able to fight at the front. Uh, of course, the Brits, uh, before the weekend, were thinking maybe we could have one podium, but maybe we could have two or, or maybe three with a bit of luck. So, of course... Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's great and, and even I, I see this year maybe more, more than the others how much the Brits around the circuit are cheering for, for Lando. There's more and more uh, orange uh, uh, cap and, uh, and shirt and so on. And, and, and they might be the Dutch fans, remember? <laughs> <laughs> you never know. We, we never know, you're right. But <laughs> no, look, Pinks, just before you go, yeah. yeah, who's your driver of the day? Lando oh. Norris got 45% of the I, official I, vote. I have to go with Lando, I have to. I mean, it was just a feel-good factor seeing him qualify on the front row and then pull away at the start gave me goosebumps, it was brilliant. For me, Oscar, uh, because of course, uh, uh, being, being P3 in quali like this after, I don't know, 10, 10 Grand Prix in Formula 1, in a McLaren that was just nowhere at the beginning of the season, uh, being just one tenth behind uh, uh, Lando, who had a more updated package than, than him on the, on the front ring. It's just uh, obviously uh, brilliant and, uh, and it has to be, to be him because the podium should have been for him. Uh, th that was nice to see Londo uh, saying that he, he, he felt for him. Uh, uh, and yeah, for me, that's, uh, that's definitely Oscar. Do you know what? I'm going to agree with you. I think Max Verstappen was brilliant. Lando Norris, of course, brilliant. But from where Oscar Piastri has come from, and to deliver in such a cool way as he has done this weekend was hugely impressive. So I'm going to go with him as well. And actually, 
for anyone who's interested in cricket watching this, I feel, you know, the Aussies need a little bit of a uh, little bit of a bump today because uh, they lost the third test to England. So uh, Oscar Piastri uh, doing his bit for the Australian state of mind. But look there, we're going to leave it there. Jeremy, thank you very much for your time. It's great to have you on the show and we do it all again in Hungary in two weeks time. Thank you so much. See you soon. Let's check in with our fantasy team now, F1 Nation Racing. Max Verstappen and our constructor Red Bull secured us more than 150 points combined, while our strategy to bring in recent F1 Beyond the Grid guest Lando Norris also worked out a treat. However, Esteban Ocon's retirement brought our total down, but P7 for Fernando Alonso and our other constructor Aston Martin means we've moved back up the lead table for the first time in a few races. Speaking of the F1 Nation World Championship, the dam must hold remain top, ahead of dodgy DRS in second, but the fight for the final podium place is very intense and it's changed with blank BGP overtaking Blackbridge Sound by three points. Remember, you have until qualifying for the Hungarian Grand Prix on Saturday the 22nd of July to make changes to your team. And come and join the fun. F1 Fantasy is totally free and you can join our league at any time. Just search F1 Nation World Championship, enter your team and play against us and other listeners. Well, that's it for this week. What a weekend it has been at Silverstone. Thank you for listening. And thanks too to Nats and Jeremy for their great work. We'll be back next week with our preview to the Hungarian Grand Prix. So speak to you then. F1 Nation is produced by Formula One and Audio Boom Studios.